In an effort to boost oil and natural gas production, the Trump administration is planning to roll back rules regarding the release of the highly potent greenhouse gas methane. As William Brangham reports, this is the latest move to dial back environmental rules put in place by the Obama administration. That's right, Judy. These rules were first put in place because methane is one of the most potent greenhouse gases, many times more potent than carbon dioxide at trapping heat in the atmosphere. When oil and gas is produced and shipped and stored, a lot of methane leaks out, which then makes climate change worse. The Environmental Protection Agency now argues those rules about limiting methane leaks are illegal, too costly, and that they don't do very much to protect the climate. Timothy Pucco of The Wall Street Journal first broke this story of this proposed change, and he joins me now. Welcome to the News Hour. Thank you for having me. So environmental groups, a lot of leading Democrats, are quite furious about this proposed change. What are they arguing? They're arguing that because of climate change that we really need these rules. Uh, methane, as you mentioned, is incredibly potent. The oil and gas industry is the leading industrial source of it, and they were intended to be part of a three-pronged attack from the Obama administration. Take care of emissions from cars, take care of emissions from power plants, or at least limit them, um, and then the oil and gas sector was next. That was seen as the other big emitter that, that could use some tightening up. And the, the rules as they were written by the Obama administration required the industry to do what about methane leaks? More inspections, uh, adding newer technology to, primarily the, the issue was contain these leaks. Uh, make sure you know when leaks happen, so monitoring systems, and, and then have better technology there to make sure that gas doesn't escape. I touched on a sort of litany of, of rationales the Trump administration has put forward as to why they want to get rid of these rules. It, what is their position on this? Well, climate, one, not a priority for this administration. Certainly President Trump has made his feelings on that very clear. Uh, and that has empowered a lot of people within the administration, not just at EPA, but other departments too, who feel that the prior administration had gone too far, had used the Clean Air Act um, to address climate in ways that it, it was never intended to be used. Is there evidence that these rules actually did what they were intended to do? Meaning, if we know that methane is a problem, we don't want to let it leak out, did these rules stop those leaks? Technology would certainly help. Increased inspections would certainly help. I think the big question is, you know, what's reasonable? And the oil and gas industry felt that in many cases, these rules were not reasonable, that they asked too much, um, that they might be restrictive, they might prevent uh, the industry from innovating and creating more effective technology. Ultimately, we don't even know the answer to your question because like many climate policies from the Obama administration, this, this was in limbo. It was not mm. something that had taken effect. Uh, they did not finalize it until 2016. Um, there were court challenges, and then ultimately the Trump administration takes over, and they have their own ideas. So you know, that basically there was a transitioning happening uh, before those rules could ever really make an impact. One of the most interesting things in your reporting was that this wasn't a, a unanimous industry opposition to these rules. Big companies wanted to keep them in place, smaller didn't. Explain why that occurred. The industry is really divided. Uh, and the larger companies that have more capital to address these things have, quite frankly, in many cases, an advantage if there are more regulations um, governing the industry. Uh, but even beyond that, um, they're, they're realizing, they have realized, they have made giant investments that are climate related. Um, into natural gas in particular. It's a, it, it's a cleaner fuel. As long as you aren't leaking it, as long as you aren't putting raw methane into the atmosphere, natural gas burns cleaner than, certainly than coal and oil. It produces many fewer emissions. And so, you know, they have been able to market natural gas to governments and utilities all over the world. It's a huge thing. It's a huge business for them. The fear is that if uh, there aren't strong government relations to regulate that, uh, that bad actors can take over. Or when times get tough and prices are lower, there isn't as much of a profit motive for the industry to spend, to invest on the technology they need to capture this stuff. So Exxon, Shell, BP, they're looking at it and saying, we're trying to sell this natural gas around the world. We want governments to believe that they can transition to it as a cleaner fuel, and we don't want to run the risk that that gets undermined. Mm. We have to have a, a cop come in from the outside to make sure that everyone is playing by the same rules and, and keeping natural gas clean. 
such an interesting dichotomy in the industry there. And you see, if I, if I could say, you see that a lot. There are big divides right now on all sorts of issues between the, the large companies, the, the global majors, and then the, the mid-size and smaller companies. Those companies have less capital to spend. They want to produce and produce and produce. They, in many cases, have been the ones that have been most successful in the Permian and other shale plays. They also have the ear of this administration. And so in, in many cases, like they're there, they're saying, no, our friends in the White House, make sure that the government is not in our way, that we're not overburdened by cost and by rules that we have to follow. And they're promising that they'll police themselves and keep the drilling boom going full tilt. Lastly, what, what are the next steps here? I, I know these don't go into effect right away. And legal challenges, what, what do you say? Absolutely. Um, even before we get to legal challenges, 60 days of public comment, um, it'll have to come back for administrative review. They're aiming to get that finished and to get this finalized by 2020. It has been very difficult for the administration to meet timelines like that. And even if they were to get this finished while President Trump is still in office, as you allude to, there's, there are going to be lawsuits. Um, the environmental community uh, wants tight regulations related to climate. They want climate issues to be addressed. And they have launched uh, they have launched illegal attacks on every rollback like this that the administration has done. Those are all still in the courts. And this one is likely to play out in the courts, too, if we get there. Timothy Puko of The Wall Street Journal. Great reporting. Thank Great. you. Thank you.